we've got an interesting clip here an interesting clip courtesy of two bears one cave a pretty good podcast on the your mom house network um where Bert Kreish and tom segura sit down and essentially try to make each other laugh until they faint in the you know immutable words of Bert Kreischer. and towards the end of the podcast they decided to phone whitney cummings for a little impromptu chat and she decided to go a bit hard in the pain at our boy chris D'Elia, which you know, some people have interpreted as her sort of throwing him under the bus again, which I don't necessarily think is true. I do think it was a bit of harmless ribbing between some friends. It might be an indication that Crystalia might be coming up from, you know, it might be coming back up into the scene and kind of popping his head, you know, above the the parapet and sort of checking the landscape and, you know, maybe making a reintroduction. Um, or it could just be her actual real feelings regarding the issue. But let me play a little bit of the clip here so you guys can have an idea of what I'm talking about and then we can discuss it when the clip ends. Let's go here. Boom. And it was, it's so um, unbelievable that I actually did an episode about it on my critically acclaimed network sitcom, Whitney. Mm-hmm. Um, Wait, I saw show. that. Who else was in that? Um, Chris D'Elia was in that. Um, that American, America's Sweetheart, Chris D'Elia. <laughs> okay. Keep going, I keep going. I, I regret nothing. I regret nothing. Okay. He's incredibly talented. Okay, um, keep going, keep going. Would have done the same thing again. Don't cut this out. Don't you dare. I'm not no. cutting it out. Don't you dare. Don't worry, they won't cut it out like you deleted his podcast from your channel. Don't worry about that. Cut this out. <laughs> And uh, we did an episode about me telling my boyfriend character in the show, Chris D'Elia, which is obviously fiction because I was, you know, 25 at the time. I was way too old for him. So it was obviously not <laughs> it's based awesome. on real life events. <sighs> Again, is that necessary, really, considering what he's legitimately going through? And I guess it probably... It's a lot funnier when it comes from people that aren't necessarily that attached to Crystalia, right? I guess it has a lot more comedic... Again, this isn't me just judging it. What do I know about comedy, right? I'm just some bloody kid somewhere sitting in London chatting on my household. But from my POV, right? It would be a lot funnier coming from someone that doesn't know him, right? Just to take the piss out of the situation. Be like, oh, look at those flipping LA tossers, bloody blah, 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 blah. Right? Rib him a bit, just, you know, poke him... Um, poke at him of course making fun of him for allegedly dealing with underage girls blah 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 but if you're within the LA comedy scene I'm sorry and you're in that podcast circuit Chris Adia was around right he was friends with everybody he was appearing on everyone's shows because he got good numbers his fan base is fanatical um, and every time I heard him mentioned on other podcasts whatever you always heard of him was number one he was a beast he absolutely killed on stage he lit that place he lit the comedy store on fire um, he was hard to follow, blah de blah blah blah. And the other thing you always heard was that he has um a bit of a sweet tooth for the ladies, right? He always seemed to have like a haram, a harem, or however you pronounce that word, of young ladies surrounding him wherever he walked around the comedy store. He don't he's he's kind of the only sort of resident rock star comedian, right, in that scene, which maybe explained why Dane Cook might have not liked Crystal Lee. I don't know, right? But that was basically what you've always heard in the grapevine between, you know reading between the lines now could it be would it be a stretch to say if you're Whitney Cummings and you worked with Chris in the beginning right when you were making your show and you were kind of working your way through Hollywood and you cast him in the show you writ him in the show and all this stuff and you spent a lot of time in his company could it be argued that you probably have a better understanding especially as a woman right women have this sort of sixth sense and they can pick up on douchebags pick up on little um things that men do couldn't you be wouldn't it be said that you would have a fair idea of who your friend is and what sort of things that he gets up to outside of comedy just for your interactions even just from just reading between the lines and catching a vibe you don't need to see all of it directly she doesn't need to stand in front of his hotel room and check the idea of everyone that's coming into his room but for her to kind of you know rib him like this 
making it seem as if she had no idea what was going on especially in the in the aftermath of the situation because i think this would have been all fine and dandy if she came out and sort of you know was non-committal about the issue wanted to take some time to process her feelings and then say hey he's my friend i'm gonna back him as much as i can da, 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 da. but she came out straight away and pushed him away do you know what i mean straight away and if you believe what you hear on other podcasts she supposedly lent him help and then completely iced him and stopped answering his phone calls just did the entire quintessential hollywood thing where you cancel somebody without allowing them to stand up for themselves or defend themselves or have any kind of recourse or you know whatever it may be called in this kind of issue and concerning how serious the allegations were you would have hoped that he would have had a bit more of an opportunity to kind of fight his own case or to you know stand up for himself or to have his friends stand up for him right in the podcast like especially if you imagine the amount of adsense dollars these guys have made off of his appearance on shows and sponsorships and and all that sort of malarkey and driving of traffic on their sites like it's just really interesting to see how quickly these very same people have turned around and essentially uh dance in his grave now again this would be more understandable if this was an up and coming door guy at a comedy store who wanted to take the piss because they've had some rough interactions with Chris because of course maybe he came in and big timed them or something or you know you know sort of ignored them or whatever it may be and you know because he's essentially cancelled there is an open slot that's kind of freed itself up so if you're a door guy or an up and coming comic it probably will I could probably understand why you'd want to stick the boot in right and sort of you know make it known that you don't agree with what he did so that you can kind of virtue signal your way up on the lineup I can understand that but if you're someone like a Whitney Cummins and you're established you've got your name cemented in this industry you've of course created a what is it um a, what was the show I don't know she mentioned it previously right you've got obviously some writing chops and super talented well regarded you know people always talk about you really well there's nothing really to be gained from virtue signaling about what you feel your ex best friend got up to behind closed doors and how you feel that kind of impacted your career it, it's just there's nothing to be gained from it whatsoever and again the allegations so far are pretty flimsy unless they know something that we don't because we don't know these people right we they don't know us an explanation we don't know if things are going to be on the scenes but there could be something to be, to be said for like okay she might be his best friend so she might know more than we know in the public fair but from what we know so far the allegations are widely widely have so far been um under scrutiny don't really hold up too well right and it looks like if anything it's a bit of an embarrassing situation but in terms of him actually committing a crime or actually hooking up with underage girls that's not necessarily the fact essentially what's happened so it's odd that she'd want to do this but again you know maybe it's all fell all's fair in love and comedy or whatever maybe let's continue jesus um, but it was so unbelievable in real life that we made a show about him not believing me and then we played one-on-one and then i kicked oh, his I totally ass. Pa- almost passed out i kicked his ass in the he's so annoying sometimes but and no he didn't pass out he does that every show he nearly passes out show but also in out. real life and this is before i had to tweet and then cut to 15 years later me tweeting about him it's a whole no, thing. We got it. Yes, I'm, I'm good at basketball. With friends like Whitney, who needs enemies, isn't it? I don't know, man. Again, maybe it's some harmless ribbing. I'm sure if I was Crystal Lee, I wouldn't be too pleased about having my friends cackling and giggling about my demise, especially considering how serious the allegations are and considering the fact that most of the allegations look a bit um, don't really hold up to the light, right? Don't really hold up to any sort of scrutiny for the most part. And again, it's Whitney Cummings, right? I mean, she's probably one of his better friends in the scene, knows him pretty well. To go out and say these kind of things doesn't necessarily help the situation, unless, of course, there's some sort of agreement behind the scenes that she's going to drop his name in there and that's going to help him come back and drive conversations. But just considering how poorly she handled the situation, the fact that she came out quite quickly and threw Chris under the bus, started going through a what it feels like a midlife crisis with all the color changes and hair color changes and wacky outfits and the uh, you know the bearing of the skin on the social media and the weird middle-aged mum first traps and shit i don't know i don't know maybe i'm reading too much into it i'd love to know what you guys think in the comments below do you think whitney Cummins was um 
overstepped the mark? Do you think she was just taking some polite jabs at her, you know, still best friend? I'm not too sure. I'd love to know what you think down below in the comments. And also, is there any possibility for Chris coming back? Will he ever make a comeback? Will he ever address the allegations publicly and talk about them? Or will he just kind of embarrassingly, you know, retreat in his mansion and raise his kid in quiet and just kind of hope it all kind of goes away? Let me know what you think in the comments down below.